evening and welcome to a look at some social media posting tools that I've been using in my business and that you may be able to use in yours. Some of these are very popular and well known and a couple of them might be a little bit less well known but perhaps one of the most revealing insights is that you may not need any of them at all particularly if you're just working with Facebook and Instagram. My name is Dante St. James, let's share that screen and get it underway. Quote first from Shonda Rhimes, not really that much related to what we're going to look at tonight, but I think she's just one hell of a kick-ass woman. And at work, I have a rule that you're not allowed to come into my office unless you're coming into my office with a solution to a problem, not only with a problem. She's a creator and head writer and the executive producer. That's the money woman behind Grey's Anatomy, Private Practice and Scandal. Three huge shows. She is one hell of a woman. But there is, I guess, a, a bit of a tie in there that sometimes we come in and going, well, we need this, we need that, we need this problem, we need this, we need this thing addressed. We don't necessarily come with solutions. And this program, the ASBAS Digital Solutions Program, is certainly made for, I guess, sharing those solutions with you. What we're going to cover tonight is how to approach uh, how to approach posting strategies. Pros and cons of these various uh, posting systems. Then we'll take a look under the hood at six different systems, Buffer, Later, or otherwise known as Latergram, Social Pilot, Sociomonials, Creator Studio, and Business Suite. Every one of these is going to be looked at as a separate entity so you can use them to do more with your social media marketing. This is brought to you by the Australian Small Business Advisory Services Digital Solutions Program, an Australian government initiative um, handled by Business Station and delivered in WA by Business Station directly in partnership with Regional Development Australia Brisbane for Queensland and Treaty Business Consulting in the Northern Territory. You can view this a little bit later on on YouTube, uh, both in my channel, Dante St. James, and in the Business Station channel as well. Both of these channels will be updated pretty much within 24 hours with this one. If you do happen to be watching on YouTube though, please whack some comments down below if you need to ask some questions, we'll come back and answer those for you. And if not, you just wanna like and share, I do ask that you try and subscribe though, so you can see new material coming across from either myself or from Business Station as well. We'd really appreciate the help. If you are here live though, you'll be able to put in some messages in the, um, the chat window is the word I was looking for, and the Q and A, where we'll be, I'll be both monitoring those as closely as I can. A little bit about me, though. Educated through New South and University of New South Wales, where I've completed a marketing and business information systems bachelor's and a master's in business information systems. Thank you to my previous employer for doing that. The Chartered Institute of Marketing in the UK is where I've got a lot of my certifications for. Uh, digital marketing and marketing in general, as well as doing some little updates through TAFE New South Wales and going through a lot of recertification this month and next month with Facebook's different uh, blueprint certified programs like the Facebook Lead Trainer Program, which I am a lead trainer for Facebook Australia and New Zealand, as well as part of Facebook Global Blueprint Training uh, Group. Uh, then there's the Digital Marketing Associate, Media Planning Professional, Media Buying Professional, Creative, creative Strategy Professional, and uh, I'm sure I'm missing one there, but it's to do, oh, Community Manager, a Certified Community Manager as well. So I've got a lot of work I do with Facebook and Instagram. And there's a lot of other government programs and smaller programs I do with other tech companies. Um, I won't go too deeply into it because let's face it, we've only got an hour to work with. We've got six systems to get through. So we're going to need all the time we can get to make sure you're getting the best value out of this. So first about how do we approach posting strategies when it comes to whether you even need these tools at all? Do you need a system for posting at all? Do you actually need one? Because sometimes you just might not. So you may need a posting system if, for instance, you're looking at uh, the need to post to more than just Facebook and Instagram, because if you're just using Facebook and Insta, you can probably use Facebook's own tools like uh, Creative Studio and Business Suite to be able to do that. If you want more expanded reporting and tracking, some of these tools do that really well. In fact, some of them are just got some amazing extra features that allow you to do so much more than what you can do natively in the apps themselves. Now you may need a 
you may need it too if you want to say do something like repeating posts. A lot of the advice I tend to give around um, businesses that don't have a lot of time for their social media these days is to repeat their posts on what we call seven by three cycle. So it's three posts a week for seven weeks and you repeat those same evergreen posts over again. And it provides a bit of social proof and some activity on your uh, timelines within your profiles that when someone goes to visit you to look for a little bit of that excuse me, I was just about to cough. So I thought I'd just get that water in there straight away. Um, that To be able to repeat those posts then cuts a lot of time off them. So it provides that social proof and some proof of life when you're hitting those profiles that you're wondering, oh, wow, maybe, am I actually gonna, you know, do I need to do all this or do I need to work with this business? Should I work with this business? Especially if they haven't posted since October, 2016. It doesn't make you feel too great about that business. And then if you want access to more advanced analytics, and we're talking about here the kind of the kind of analytics that um, are going to show you more in-depth details about your, uh, your audience's movements, your audience's likes, dislikes, the way that they interact with your stuff, what their engagement levels are like. You may also want access to a media library so you can upload all your photos to one library on this system. So for instance, some of the things, uh, I used to use a system called Sendable, which was a fantastic system. Now this system was able to hold in place all the different uh, media that I want to use. And then I just simply pull up what I needed when I need it. So if I wanted to go, you know what, I'm going to get that photo that I got that had the pink background and the woman who was yelling very loudly and use her again for something. So you could browse through almost like you go through Canva and you're able to then, um, look for uh, the same images that you used before. It's a really good way of seeing, I guess, the things that have worked before. And this is where your advanced analytics can stand out with some of these systems. If you look at these advanced analytics and you see the things that have worked before, you can very easily pull up those posts or pull up the media that you use, the photos and the, the videos that you've used before and reuse them again for a new post. And I find that some of these tools are great for seeing not just a list of posts that are coming up, but a calendar view of posts. If you wanna see what is happening in the next week with all your clients, if you're a social media manager, or if you wanna see what's going on the next week, if you are a business yourself, then you've got the opportunity to be able to see it in a much more logical sequence. So you can see if things are sort of clashing on different days or if you overscheduled something on a Wednesday with three posts when you really just need one in there. So when it comes to these systems, there's um, certain things we need to look at that are pros and cons. Now, the pros of these systems are that some of them just do so much of the heavy lifting, but there are some offsets that I really need. And some of the, the pros we're gonna look at very much in detail as we open up each of these systems that I've got ready to go to show you today. So ask yourself though, if you may be buying more problems than you're actually solving by buying these tools. For example, often, and I had this happen today with the social manuals account that I was using, it had disconnected a month ago from Facebook and I needed to re-authenticate my connection with Facebook. Now, the good news is that most of these systems, um, I use Social Pilot more these days than most systems. These systems will let you know if they need um, reconnecting if you're in the system or in some cases will send you email notifications to let you know that, that happens. Now, this is a very small inconvenience, honestly, because it just involves you going in, reconnecting the system to Facebook, LinkedIn, Google, Instagram, whatever the system is you're posting to, and then you're back up and running again. Um, one area though, this is more to do with your use as a social media manager and as a business with these systems is not treating each audience as distinct. What I mean by that is that your audience may be very, very different on LinkedIn to what they are on say, maybe Instagram. Instagram people may be completely different. They might be more overseas. They might be more interstate where your LinkedIn audience might be more local or in Facebook's case, they're generally more local, but something like Instagram tends to be more global. So if you're sending out the same material to every single network all at the same time, you may not be respecting the platform that you're working with. In fact, what you'll be doing is sending people what you think works on one platform 
to a whole bunch of platforms, regardless of whether it actually works or has some sort of proven way of working on all those platforms, which then brings me to what we call the laziness factor. Quite often I get approached by people who, in, uh, when I'm training with Facebook saying, oh, these days nobody sees my stuff. It's just no one sees it. I think Facebook's throttling me. They're, they're punishing me for something because I'm a business and they don't like businesses. And I'm like, no, they do like businesses. There's a very big difference. So there's you know, 170 million businesses on Facebook these days as opposed to the 20,000 that may have been in 2008. Very, very big difference. Though it is worth knowing that one of the things we notice a lot when it comes to uh, social media management and the organic reach is that when people use third party networks, and this is where the accusation comes from people saying, oh, but you're gonna punish me if I use Hootsuite or Buffer. No, there's no punishment for that. What happens though, is that when we're using these looking forward and schedule ahead posting systems, we tend to get a little bit lazy. We do the very bare minimum of some sort of post that isn't very dynamic, isn't very now, isn't timely in the slightest, or isn't really that interesting. And we go, I've ticked the box. There's Wednesday, Thursday, Fridays, and Saturdays posts. They're done, great, move on, next job. The problem with that is that if you're not putting effort into those posts and making them timely, interesting, and getting through that, you know, who gives a damn factor that people would look at. Like, honestly, the posts that we put up there sometimes as businesses, and I do this myself all the time. I'm often doing them in a rush because I look at social media as an afterthought. What I really want to do is get into my menu, get into my workshops, or get into my one-to-ones, or get into the webinar or something like that, rather than the, the boring stuff of posting on social media. But the problem is if we think of social media as an afterthought, we get really lazy and we post things that just are not interesting and this aren't particularly engaging. People don't really wanna take part in those things. There can also be vast differences between these tools. And now I've been known over the years to jump in and out of lots of different tools. I've used everything from Hootsuite through to Buffer. And then I graduated from Buffer through to uh, Social Pilot. Social Pilot to, uh, what was it called? Sendable. Sendable was probably the most expensive thing I've ever used. Um, I've used Softfront, which was even more expensive again. And then back to Business Suite and Creator Studio. I'm back on the Social Pilot again. We jump around a lot of these, but the tools are vastly different and come with lots of different features. For example, Buffer, which is one of the world's most popular networks to be using to post to multiple social media networks at once, doesn't contain a connection through to either TikTok or through to Google My Business. For me, posting to Google My Business is a bit of a no-brainer. I have to do it because we do a lot of SEO work on Google. So I need something that's going to go there and Buffer doesn't do it. So I need to move out of Buffer to something that does. Or let's just say um, you are doing a social media business where you're working with lots of different clients. And some of those clients may need to connect through to TikTok to schedule something through to TikTok. And this particular system you're using does not connect through to it. If it's Buffer or Hootsuite or something like that, then you need to look for something that does. Or you may go, I need a very specific thing such as the seven by three um, social media uh, technique that I use for a lot of my clients, which is to post seven weeks of three posts a week, then repeat every seven weeks. Now, not all of these tools will schedule repeat posts. So I'll schedule them once over, but they won't schedule them on a repeating basis unless you go in and manually schedule them for lots of different dates. And that isn't always a native feature with all these systems. And of course, not all the networks are supported. Um, sometimes you might want to post to Pinterest, but they don't have a connection in your tool or to Google My Business or to LinkedIn company pages, even though they might reach through to LinkedIn, uh, yeah, LinkedIn, um, what am I thinking? LinkedIn, um, pro like personal profiles is the word I was looking for. And then as well, just because they post through the, to Instagram, doesn't mean they necessarily post to Instagram stories. That's a whole other deal. So what are you to do? You have to find the one that best matches what your requirements are. Though one really strong criticism I have of people who tend to automate their social media or schedule it once a month and then let it run for a month is that often they forget that social media is a two-way thing. 
it's not like a radio station where you say those words and they go out there in the world and you never really hear anything back. No one ever like talks back to you unless it's talk back radio. So in this case, the follow-up, the actual checking and seeing what's going on with engagement, with comments, with likes, um, with inspiring and creating and continuing conversations on your feed and on your, on your profiles, quite often isn't being done because social media has been relegated to that thing that we do on a Friday afternoon at 3 p.m. and we're getting out there at 4.20. So we've got an hour and 20 minutes to get it all done. And we're not really thinking with our best mind or trying to make our best moves forward with there. So what we might do then is just go, well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to go and do the least possible that I can do. So I'd like to introduce you to our first system today, which is Buffer, if you've never used it before. This might be one that's um, gonna be a little bit hard for, oh, wait a second, back, back, back. There we go. So it's gonna uh, change over to another screen. Here we go. And back we go to Buffer. Now Buffer is one of the most popular systems that we're gonna show you here today. These are the kind of systems that I think are going to really change what you're doing. Just gotta make sure I'm actually sharing the right screens. It actually feels like I'm not. Um, if someone could, let, yeah, I think it is coming through. So I just got a, uh, a couple of screens coming through with stuff. <laughs> when you just screen share on screens like this, you often get also the uh, stuff coming up from, from Zoom getting in the way as well. Now we've got it right. So there's lots of different plans when it comes to Buffer. Pricing wise, they do start off with a free option. Um, they don't like to advertise that, but they do have a free option. There you go. So you can free annually and allows you per social channel per month and that's three channels with very basic features so it only allows you to use 14 posts in a row so two weeks basically um, that you can schedule ahead so none of this month and three months in advance thing and you can only use three of the social media channels that they do actually support so if we look then back into what their social media channels are that they support and we look at uh, the tools so publishing we'll see that they connect through down here a bit further instagram come on show us the rest of them as instagram facebook linkedin pinterest are their basics that they go through to and twitter so that's not going to post through to instagram stories but one thing that i found very interesting about their instagram stuff um, that wasn't present there when i used to use buffer is that they were allowing you to not just direct schedule onto instagram but they were allowing you to post a first comment as well so if you wanted to start that whole process of social interaction you wanted to start the ability to be able to uh, have like hashtags that weren't in the actual caption but are pushed into that first comment you could actually schedule that first comment to schedule when your Instagram post actually posts in there. Another smart little feature they've got too is the ability for you to what they call a shop grid. So you can send people from your Instagram bio to a shop grid that's been set up, which is a great way of including what your e-commerce properties may be. And then you can sort of plan posts in advance and get notifications to post natively. So what it does, it says here, I can put in the writing for you, but when it comes to the posting natively, if you want the really like advanced kind of things and filters that are available through the Instagram app, instead of what you might build in say Canva, then you can do that and be reminded to do it at that moment when it's time to post. That's pretty much the same as any of, those, of these tools we're gonna come across. There's no real advanced stuff when it comes to posting to Facebook groups. It's all about Facebook pages and pay Facebook profiles. Um, one thing I probably would have to point you to is that they do have within their, um, within their, uh, within their uh, suite is a really good in-depth lot of analytics. And it measures basically by pulling out information from your Facebook insights, your Instagram insights, and your stats from LinkedIn, Pinterest, and Twitter to be able to display them in a much, much nicer way. So it allows you, now you're not gonna get analytics with all of them, not with the, certainly not with a free version. You have to pay for the basic version that will give you. And they've got very simple pricing at, at Buffer that allows you to then get these really good enhanced analytics that show you a lot more than just simply just the clicks and just the reach. 
Um, you can also then do things like compare things. So you can look at if you've had boosted posts on Facebook, for instance, you can see the difference between the boosted posts and the organic posts. And then you can look at things like your stories. Say for your stories on Instagram and Facebook, you can measure how they've gone and look at how individual posts and hashtags have worked as well. I'm going to take a look under the hood in just a second. But another area that uh, Buffer really shines well is in engagement. So you can then go and look at almost like a social inbox where you can see the different um, things that are happening from people's uh, likes and comments. So you can then reply within Buffer to them. So it becomes not just a place to post to social media, but you can also engage with your fans through it as well. So let's log in to my account here and we'll start connecting some stuff and seeing what we can post. So in my account, I'm there. I'm going to go to publishing. I've got a free account here at the moment. Haven't used the pay account for quite some time. Oh, look, there I do actually have one. So this particular entity, Sydney Financial Planning and Illawarra Financial Planning, haven't really used this for quite some time. There's no queue going on at the moment, but I can look at some analytics of the things they've posted in the last 30 days, which of course they haven't. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, start adding some more properties to this and show you how you then connect those through. So if I want to uh, get rid of these guys, what I want to do is get into my settings and I want to then remove this and so manage channels. Sorry, it's where I go. And then I can bring these guys out. So remove the channel and remove this one when it refreshes. There we go, remove channel. And then I'm going to add in some new ones using my Facebook account. So I'm going to go in through Facebook and connect. So how you can see, there's even a connection through to Shopify, which allows you to then connect Shopify uh, products to your posts. So let's uh, connect Facebook. So I don't want a public profile or a group. Um, I really want a public profile, not a group. So I'm going to go start connecting my Facebook page. It's going to ask me, I'm already logged into Facebook already. So I'm going to connect through that. And what that will do is give me the choice of what the things are that I want to add in there. So those two, I don't want to add those. They're gone. So I don't need to add any of those because I don't really want to connect to any of those. But I can go to Instagram, for example, go and authenticate that and I'll look at the different Instagram things that I've got connected through to my Facebook account. There you go, Sydney Financial Place. So it's actually, you know, it's not showing me all of my available channels. So I'll need to look at those a bit more. And it does give you some really good help stuff. So it's saying, look, if you're seeing the social channel marked as unavailable, you need to do certain things. So you remove all the queued posts and all that or set up a new account. So if I was still working within that account, let's just say I'll add Sydney Financial Planning to my buffer. Once this refreshes and adds it back in. So we've got a channel now. Sydney Financial Planning Instagram business. If I want to connect a new channel, let's say um, I'll reconnect them again through their Facebook page. Interesting though, you can connect through Instagram groups in Buffer too, which is a really good option. So I add this one in, add to Buffer. Okay, now I've got access to both of these. I can then go into my publishing. Now, uh, bear in mind, you get a 14 day trial, which allows you to have access to all of the most, um, you know, the, 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 the premium things as well. So I'm on that 14 day trial with this particular account. So now I'm logged in, it's giving me suggested times that it says based upon in Instagram when it thinks are the best times to get there. But bear in mind though, this is a little trick. I'm currently in Brisbane, um, usually in Darwin, but at the moment in Brisbane, I can't see, I can't see how to pick up that I'm in London. So I need to change that over from London. So let's just change that to at least where I normally am, which is Darwin. There you go, Darwin, Australia, or wherever you happen to be. And then I can choose the posting times I want to do. So when it sets up an automatic, what they call a buffer of posts for certain times, I don't want to post on Saturday and Sunday, for instance. So it does remove those. Or I can clear all the posting times, empty it all out, and create new ones myself. So I can say on weekdays at... 11.30 a.m. So 11.30 a.m. I'm going to say I want posting times 11.30 a.m. every day. And I can then go, well, actually, no, it's not every day. It's just Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And therefore, I have my posting times for Instagram for that particular channel. And I can do the same over here, but I might want it to be a little bit different. Now, they've got, to, again, this little trick set to London. So I want to change that to my local time. And then I want to rip out the clear all the posting times, 
because I want to set my own. So I want it to be weekdays. And instead of 11, I'm going to make it 12 p.m. An hour after it goes live on Instagram. And then again, turn off Tuesday and Thursday. So now I've set up my posting times. I go into my queue and I can see that these are the times that it wants to sort of do from, this is uh, for, for Facebook and for Instagram. It's got my times queued up. So what all I need to do now put in my post is I can just share it up here and it gives me the option to share to both channels or just to one. And I can share the same thing, add an image or video. And I can then further customize my message for depending on the network I'm going to. So I want to type a certain thing for Facebook, such as what a wonderful morning, but I want to do a slightly different thing on Instagram. So this is where, you know, the laziness thing can kick in a little bit because you want to go, oh, I'll just do the same thing to both of them. Let's just do the same. Um, so what I'll do here is pick up a photo of something. It's like a, a meow of um, Kim from Kath and Kim's knee. And don't ask me why that's in there. And then we can go to Instagram and go hashtag goals. And then it's all it makes is suggested I use that same um, image. I put that in and then I can add that to the queue to go out at 11 o'clock on Instagram tomorrow morning or at 12 on Instagram in um, on Facebook tomorrow at lunchtime. The extra feature for Instagram is I can type in a location. So if I could type in the location of my office, looking for it, click start it, it found it, and then it went away. Come on, you can do it, buddy. Click start, there we go. So it's got my my location set in Instagram that I can put there. Also the feature as we discussed in Instagram, I I can leave the first comment. So you can put in the first comment to this particular one and go, okay, what do I wanna put in there? That will open up once I've got the premium version of Instagram. Then I can either add that to the queue and it will jump immediately into tomorrow's queue at 11 and 12 for the um, Instagram and the uh, Facebook, or I can set other times. I can share it right now if I want, or I can schedule it for another time. Now, the weakness here is I can't schedule it for multiple times. I can only schedule it for one time. It's not giving me the option to have many times, unlike some of the other systems we'll look at a little bit later on. So the use is very, very simple. Going and look at the analytics, very, very simple as well. Um, we can look at things that are drafted or awaiting approval. So I can upgrade to then collaborate with a team and have other users add theirs in for me as well. But basically all this is as is, is, is simple as it's gonna look. There's not going to be a lot of complication in here. And if you ever wanna jump in and post something just straight away, that's at least in your system and you want to post it now, you can post it now just by going share now and that will allow you to do it. So plenty of things you can do in Buffer. It is a good little system. It's a solid little system and it's really super reliable. I did find though with um, LinkedIn, it does tend to lose its connection quite often. So when it loses connection with LinkedIn, you have to keep going in every week or so sometimes and reconnect it all. But that's not just exclusive to Buffer. Sometimes this happens with other systems as well. So the next one we're gonna look at right now is Later. Now Later is much more known as an Instagram tool. It started off native to Instagram and it's something which Instagram users have loved for a long, long time um, because it doesn't only work with what Instagram is like, it gives you a really cool calendar view, but it also one of the few systems that also posts Instagram stories. So let's take, take a look. I'm gonna log into my account, which I've got another trial in here because I used to use Later quite heavily. And then once um, the Instagram story started um, kicking in to be able to be scheduled within, um, within uh, what am I talking about? Uh, business Suite on Facebook, I no longer needed Later anymore. Okay, so we look at all this and we see, look at the, it's a, you know, this looks like a calendar. We can do things. We've got a media library, so I can go in there and load up and see any sort of um, images that I've used in the past to repurpose them. Later also has a conversations view. Now, the conversations view is an upgraded thing for a system that I don't have access to. But what it allows you to do is really work with your Instagram comments and reply to them. So the beauty of this is that you've got this. Um, conversational view that allows you to 
see what's going on basically in your channel. People that are having conversation, you can jump into all those conversations and it really allows you to have a neat and tidy view of that. Now, of course, Business Suite does this as well. So you don't really need to have a third party piece of software to do that. Um, your analytics are basically pulled in from your profile. That is, I was starting to actually start to pull in some of the things I've posted, say for instance, my Instagram account. Um, I don't, I'm like, I can't see a year of data in that because I haven't upgraded yet. So I'm just using a free version. And that's one of the limits, um, one of the limits of it being a free one. Free uh, for basic on later and for buffer does give you only just the last, say, 30 days of your data. So it's not going to show me any more than that. But it's also not going to show me any planned data at all because um, I've only just really installed this, so it hasn't got much in the way of it. But it will go back through my previous posts and let me know how I've been doing. And I don't really put much thought into Instagram for this particular business because honestly, it's not where my audience are. My audience are not on Instagram, but I like to put at least some of these posts in there. And my lack of attention to Instagram shows in likes and comments over here in the engagement levels. There's really nothing that's going on in the last 30 days that's really worth looking at. But I can also look at my stories. So if I had stories in here and I had an upgraded plan, I'll be able to see how my stories are going, how many people saw it, how many people tapped on it or swiped up or those kind of things. And then I can also go back to my overview and then see what my collected data is doing collectively. Now back up in the calendar, this is where I'm going to start making my posts. So let's say I'm connected through the Instagram through my Clickstarter account. So if I want to then upload some media and start to post something, I'll just go to a place on the calendar that I want to post to. So let's say Friday morning at 9 a.m. So I'm going to click in there and I'm going to look. It wants to take me through a getting started thing. I just want to post. So there we go. So there you go, it's forming at 9.15. So I'm going to go up a bit higher. Let's go up here. And my computer's now running really slowly. Come on, you can do it. Let's just upload some media in the meantime so we can get some pictures there to work with. I'll try and use something better than that uh, stupid knee that I got. Maybe my meeting planning certification badge. So that's now sitting in there, it's something I can use. having a lot of trouble with Google Chrome lately. It's not playing nicely. So drag it over here. There we go into nine o'clock. And then it says, okay, what do you now want to do? So once you've uploaded the media, drag it onto the calendar and then you can type in, okay, um, I re-qualified for my media planning certification. May 21, 22. Please excuse my horrible typing at this time of the night. And then I can put in things like emojis. So you can see how this is very, very geared towards people who are um, very much about influence. So I can look for hashtags, look for a hashtag as um, Facebook and suggest what hashtags. I might go Instagram, yes. Social media, yes. Marketing, yes. Social media marketing, absolutely. Digital marketing, yep, sounds good. Uh, entrepreneur, I'm one of those, and I'm a business as well. And my Insta good, probably not YouTube, maybe, but definitely small business. Insert my eight hashtags, and there it goes. Now, what I'm able to, if I had set up auto publishing, which I haven't in this case, I could whack all of these hashtags down in this first comment. Now, I haven't done auto publish because um, I don't want to accidentally publish onto Instagram while we're doing this demo. But in there, I could actually have that. And then I could have a location and even tagging people in it. One great little feature, though, of this is if I want to snazz up this, I can edit the image. And this is where I guess later really sets itself apart as a tool for influencers. Um, it's probably not as great a thing to look at it through here, but I can put some text over the top and say, say something like, yay, look for a, um, a fun one, handwriting. Put it up here and type in, yay. And it can change the color of that add things like filters. So filters are not gonna look so great on here, but you get the idea of changing the color of that. Not really much I can do with blue. Or discard my changes and get out of there. Now this 
some other systems like Sendable, which I'm not showing you today, which has a much more advanced or, um, editor for your images. So as you're going, you're editing really, really interesting images. Updated image, it's inserted the yay on it. So now I've got the ability to be able to play a bit more with nicer things. So lots of people like Later because it's got these great little tools in it that really do allow you to do some really snazzy stuff. So once I go, yep, I'm going to put in that save, it's going to put into the queue and send that out. So I'm not going to do that right now because I don't particularly need to um, send out uh, another notification to my channel. If I wanted to say, for instance, make stories, it's just a little bit different. Up the top here, we've got stories and this takes us to a different kind of one. So what I've got to do is I've got to download these, um, these apps. So I've got to make sure I've got the app, which I do have the app on Google Play. And then as I go through, please let me go through. It's gonna, I have to go through a process basically of installing that app and approving it, connecting it through to here. So then I get a similar kind of thing on here. So you see, I've got my, my view on my timeline. I can take this, turn this into a story at, let's say sometime tomorrow morning, oops, back over here. So let's go a bit beyond that uh, Friday, say earlier. At 11.22 p.m., I might want to move that along. And then it creates a story out of that. So I can edit that story and crop it about a bit. So I want to uh, crop it to something that's going to fit a, a story. So Pinterest, Instagram stories, there we go. It's only going to fit that. So I can go, well, maybe what I'll do is take that side of it, update it, so it then shows that. And then the second story, when I want to create it, is do the same thing, drag it in there, and then edit this one, so it then shows the other side of it. Instagram stories, and we want to show you that side. So when it goes on, it's going to show like a little bit like this. So as you tap through the stories, side one, side two, and then moving on through it all. And you can continue to add more of those. So if I wanted to add in another one again, I can do that as well, or upload more media. So we've got a few more photos to play with because I don't often use this. I don't have a lot of these coming in. So maybe this one might be a good one. Load up another one. Should have plenty of photos in here from all the photos I've done. So we've got uh, Pinterest Square. So I can save this one, drop that in there. And this becomes another part of my posts. And I can edit and bring it over to so the word show. There we go. Look for my Instagram story size. And there I've got another piece of that. So what it will do is it's automatically up here in the stories put it out to certain time. So it starts off at 12.20 a.m. So I may want to change that to from 11.22 p.m. to 22nd at, I don't know, um, 09.22 a.m. maybe. Make it Friday, so it actually can do an a.m. There you go. 09.36 a.m. I can save my story. And that will now post tomorrow morning in that schedule in there of those different things I've done. Now I'm going to take those out, of course, because I need to cancel that because I do not want those going forward. So I'm going to discard it. But it allows you then to make them either a second apart, a minute apart, five minutes apart, maybe even a whole day apart. If you want to keep your stories coming up to the top of the stories feed, that's a really clever way to do it, is to make sure that every 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, hour or so, there's something new that's coming in your story. So no matter where someone's coming onto it, it's coming up as being relevant in their feed at stories at a certain time. So Later has many, many bigger features. Their analytics are excellent. Their conversation ability to be able to read comments that are coming up is absolutely excellent. When I used it before, that's one of the things I thought was really good. However, though, this is a system that's very heavily geared towards Instagram. It's not so great with all the other ones. So even though it can work with Facebook, it can work with Twitter, Pinterest, even TikTok, it's one of the few that will work with TikTok and with LinkedIn. It really does work best with Instagram because it was built with that in the first place. So yes, you can connect to TikTok, which is pretty cool. You can add that social profile and you can add what your TikTok username is, but it does need the later mobile app to connect through. So what it does, it schedules everything through. You do all the creative through here, but then when you go at, so let's just say it was a nine o'clock tomorrow morning that you wanted to schedule that TikTok, just the same as scheduling an Instagram story. It does a reminder 
on your mobile as a notification. Then you go, yes, I want to post this now. It copies the details from the later app and then you it pastes it into the Instagram or TikTok app so that it can put it through then and there. So it's not really that great for if you're wanting to be posting stuff on TikTok overnight or on Instagram Reels for that matter, or even on Instagram Stories, because you're not able to, to do that. You're not able to do that, that automatically approval thing overnight. So you'd need to be able to have someone who's awake, who has access to that, and then can be published through those mobile push notifications. That's one of the weaknesses that you can use it for TikTok. You can use it for stories, but you do need to be doing it during your awake time. Otherwise, you're gonna have a few problems with trying to get that going. So now that we've worked with later, I'd like to introduce you to Social Pilot. Now this is my daily driver that I use and I use it for a lot of my clients because it allows me one very important feature. And that feature is all about the ability to schedule things to repeat. So as you can see, I'm doing stuff with Channel 10 Darwin. I'm doing stuff for uh, a clear reception. Uh, for the uh, a hotel, a motel in Air in Queensland. So I'm going to show you the first up that yes, I've got lots of accounts in here. I can see all the accounts I've got connections through to that I can post to. Lots of them. I can also show you my posts. There's currently 498 posts that are sitting in the queue. So in this queue. I can see all the posts I've got. So for instance, in this case, Alva Beach is a post for um, a motel in air in, in central North Queensland. So you're able to put these onto, I've got them going to Facebook, I've got them going to LinkedIn, I've got them going to Instagram. And so those three different places are getting that, then they're able to go through and be scheduled ahead of time to go to those three places. So on Saturday morning, these three things will go. Now I can force them now to go share now, or I can edit them before time if I need to. But what I've done is also make sure that these are repeated. So if I go down far enough and see this word that says coast, if I go down seven weeks worth of these, I'm gonna find coast come up again at some point in seven weeks time. This is a very long feed because what I've done, I've got several different clients that I'm working with that have got repeat posts coming up. So I've got stuff scheduled ahead at the 7th of September, which will also post at another time. So I go at this, um, I'm not actually sure I can see all the dates that this one's going for, no, only that particular instance. So the idea would be that on July 24, those may go ahead, but the repeat of that, which is gonna come up in seven weeks time. So I can filter down my records just to show stuff that's coming up from. Uh, come on, from Parkside Hotel, just their stuff, and it refreshes. So now I can just see their stuff. I can see that there's, you know, perhaps like there's a, there's a repeat here that I didn't notice. On Tuesday, August 3, I've got the same thing coming in on Thursday, August 5. So there's a bit of a problem there. And then Saturday, August 7 has got the right thing. So that's when you look at these, you can spot problems that will come up straight away. So I've already spotted that. The coast one's right. The safe one's right. The active one's right. History's right. But then we hit a problem in August where we've got the same post in there. So what I might want to do is take this one, this one, and this one, and delete those guys because they are not ones that we want in there. Mm -hmm. This one to, and then I can replace those with another post later on so they don't have that. So it gives you at least a list that you can check on to make sure things aren't being repeated where they shouldn't be repeated. Looking pretty good though there for the rest of it. Just made that one little mistake with that particular post. So there you go, we've got the repeat for Coast. This is the one that's coming up this Saturday. It doesn't play again until Saturday, September 11. So you've got seven weeks gap between them that's been able to repeat. And how that's done is by creating a post. I can then load up the images that I wanna put in there. So let's I load up um, an image from, uh, back down here, I saw one that was really quite good to use. Maybe this uh, billabong with a croc, there we go. So we've got a crocodile coming up. I can choose the group, which is then all the channels that I've connected through to 10 Darwin, or I can do the same for all the channels I've connected through to say the Parkside Motel Air. So it selects those three, that's his ones that he connects through to. And then I'm able to type in what I wanna type in. This book is great for kids. 
I can type in my hashtags, put in these, and I can even go into Canva and create something in Canva to insert as the image in this particular post. Animated GIFs can also be added. So I can add GIFs and search for GIFs. So let's just say I'm looking for um, something from, let's say Loki. So I can insert Loki in there, but it's only allowing me to upload either 10 images or I can load up one GIF. So there's lots of different restrictions because all these different places have different rules to them. Now, in amongst all that, I can then change who I want my audience targeting for if I really want to get technical. But really what you're wanting to do is go, I want to book this in. So what I want to do is either repeat the post another time, but the trick is I want to schedule it. And the scheduling tool allows me not just to add one session there, I can add a second one. So I can go, okay, um, the 25th of July, I'm going to put it on the 25th of August as well. And it heard on the 25th of, and this is where you get to repeat it. So this tool alone has made it like the, the number one reason why I use this particular tool as my daily driver for my clients is because this allows me to schedule out a year's worth of repeats without having to go through and create new content for them every week. Because let's face it, how interesting can a motel or a, um, a, a rooftop antenna installer be? They understand that they're not that interesting, so they wanna make it as easy as possible for them to do their social media. Now, in amongst all this, you've got all the normal things you would expect. Um, you can group your social media into groups. So I've got a group here of three, which is my Parkside Motel Air. I can manage my ads I can create ads on Facebook and Google as well that connects through your Facebook ads manager and your Google ads manager. The analytics are like you'd expect from any of our different places. So I can look into Facebook, look at 10 Darwin, look at their total likes, pulling that information out live from Facebook itself. So you get some nice little reports you can play with, or you can even pull it out to three months and see what the growth or what the reach or engagement or likes have been over that time. When they've added people, three people they added today, um, but we lost a couple of people yesterday. Look at the inbox. So this is similar to the inbox thing we had with later. It allows you to connect through certain things. So Facebook is an inbox we can look at. It doesn't connect through to your Instagram inbox. So it'll only read the comments and the things that are coming thing through via the, um, the comments that are coming through from the Facebook one. That's not gonna work on Instagram. So there are limits. And then you can also give team and client access to different people as well. So if you want your client to be able to approve things, they can those approve those and then make them go live. And then your content and feed is that you can actually add RSS feeds that give you content coming through from other places that you can use as inspiration for creating the content on your particular social channels. So that's social pilot in a nutshell. Uh, for me, it's the one that seems to make sense to what I'm doing. Next up is social manuals, which is the last of the, uh, the paid things. Now, social pilot is not free. It doesn't have a free version. It's only a paid version. Social manuals though is one you'll see quite often coming up on places like AppSumo where you get daily, um, daily deals on different pieces of software. Now, I recently reconnected my um, Facebook accounts. And as you can see, there's lots of different pages that I've got through Facebook, uh, Twitter, Instagram that I've got permission to from various clients that I work with. So likewise, I can publish to, let's just say, AdMade. And if they've got anything else on there, they don't, but they might then say, oh, I'm gonna also do it to my own Facebook account and send it off to Treaty Business Consulting's uh, Instagram as well and then type in what I want to type in. Hello world. And then I can do things like um, seeing what that's going to look like and then adding the first comment into Instagram. Now this is one thing which is appearing in more and more tools. And I think if you're an Instagram person and these tools are very important to you, I think you're going to love social manuals. I know my friend Barbara in Alice Springs absolutely swears by this tool. She really loves it. And it's a really attractive tool that's come a long way from when I first got it. When I first got it, it was rubbish. Now it's so much better. It's got the calendar view. If you prefer to look at a calendar view, let's just pop out of there and show you what it looks like. So you can see different things that we posted at different times in your calendar. You can then give them categories. 
so you can give, so you can really plan out what you're doing. So in this case, they've got promotional, inspirational tips, industry news, things that they're repeating every three months. Social manuals does have a repeating function as well. So this is probably a cheaper way for you getting a repeat function. I'm trying to tie it into Social Pilot for now because I've already scheduled ahead a year's worth of posts for several clients, so I can't really go back there. One thing they do have though is the approving thing, and this is where you can have a client come in and approve the posts that you've put in. So photos, videos, text, even the social posts, they can then go in and approve those for you. Or you as a team leader with, per se, a, you've got a VA, a virtual assistant who's making these for you in the Philippines, and then you come back and then you want to approve those yourself. It is a great tool for that. Honestly, this is probably a tool that I'll be looking at again more closely now that I've got a fully paid lifetime deal with it. I should make use of it because it doesn't cost me any money to run it. One thing I do really like though, is this social CRM. And what this does, it picks up um, people who have got um, have connections with you for different uh, kind of accounts. Let's just say that someone with the same name is connected to you through LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram. You can then be able to treat them like a single entity under this customer relationship management system. It's very basic. It doesn't have a lot of features, but it lets you know, for instance, if there's a particular person who is posting quite regularly, you can see when their last post was, what their status is right now, their email address, if they can pull it out, if you can pull it out of the system and a link through to their page, whether it's a Facebook page, you can then see these people's different things, like how many friends they've got, what are their follow account in Twitter, what are their connections in LinkedIn. So you can start to see these people as, you know what, this person's got 1500 connections in LinkedIn. I really want to start to developing that relationship so I can message them through this system. System. So this is a particularly great system, which is why I've saved it almost for last, because it adds so many different features in. When it comes to publishing, this is another one of those tools that will post to so many different networks. So if I look at like, the networks that I want to connect to, uh, there's even more that I can add. So I can you know, add an account and it says, what kind of account do you want to add? You want to count Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram. Do you want to add Instagram, uh, Pinterest, sorry, Twitter, or do you want to then look at YouTube? It doesn't have TikTok, unfortunately, but it does have the ability to go through to YouTube. So you can post through to YouTube's, uh, YouTube uh, updates and shorts. So there's status updates you can put through on YouTube and what they call shorts. You can also add more than one account. So you don't have to be stuck with just one Facebook account. You can log into another Facebook account or in LinkedIn, you're not stuck with just one of those. You can type, you can actually log into others as well. In this, it's telling me, for instance, I have to re-authenticate. This is one problem I did have with social manuals in the early days that LinkedIn requires re-authentication every 30 days. So it does become a little bit, um, a little bit annoying. So social manuals is something which I think is something I, I think personally I'm going to start using a lot more in the future because of it's just so full of features. And personally, I bought it two years ago on a lifetime plan for like $49 US. So I, I'd be mad not to bring it back into my use because it doesn't cost me anything anymore. Create a studio in Facebook though is something which you may want to look at as a difference um, to using any external things because this is an actual Facebook tool. So for instance, I can decide what I want to create. I want to create a post. I want to create tests. I want to create a story, for instance. Now this is in Facebook. So up here on the top, you've got the Facebook logo and the Instagram logo. So Facebook allows me to do things like create a post, create some test posts, add a story, upload some video, upload multiple videos, post video across different pages that I have access to, or go live. And I think this is the best place for you to go live from because there's so many different creative tools you can pop in there. Now, the options for Instagram, so if I want to create a post there, it's just create a post. It's not allowing me to create a story, but it does allow me to create an IGTV video. So if it's a long format video that I want to put in, I can actually do that there. So this is a feed um, of all the content that's been published by all the things that I've got published access to. So this is one I did the other day myself for my own business. Let's put it back up again. It doesn't really want to go on there. Come on, you can. It doesn't want to. I think it's because I'm sharing some at the moment, so it doesn't really want to do it, but there's a post to Dom's bar in Darwin. So here you go. Um, different things I've got access to or have 
posted myself. So I can then see not only, because remember this is within Facebook and Instagram itself. So it's got full access to all the analytics and all the insights that come with Facebook and Instagram. So you're not taking you know, dumbed down versions, you're taking the very actual versions they're coming from. So I can look at that, I can go to the post, look at it in actual Instagram or Facebook, edit the post if I wanna redo it again, and then I can be done and get out of there. I can also look at, these are all the content, but I can look at the IGTV content, if any. So there's IGTV content that I've put up myself, which has gone up as um, longer format videos that I want to put in as um, a lot of them being the, the videos that I've done through these particular, um, particular uh, webinars, for instance, because they're long, they're about an hour long, they can go in there as well. You can look at carousels that you want to post in there and stories through Instagram as well. Even though you can't create stories yet, um, it's not far away, trust me, um, you can look at your stories and see how they've gone. So click on here, see the story, see I can't edit it or anything like that. I can only look at it and how it went. On the other hand though, and the, you've got a calendar view on there as well, just like that. You can look at your monetization if you've got monetization set up. Um, connect other Instagram accounts, look at your insights. So it's got a lot of information that's a little bit easier to read through than what you do, for instance, if you're just working from these third party projects. Now, the other thing that's in Facebook that's come a long way is Business Suite. Now, if you haven't really looked at it, it now does have the ability to post stories on Facebook stories, but also now on Instagram stories and allows you to schedule them ahead. So I've connected through my Clickstarter account here. I can create a post by saying that there's a certain date that I wanna send this post out on. I can start putting in the materials that add the video, the photo. I can create a video by talking to the screen right now and recording it and record it from my actual camera on the screen and my and all this. I can also then customize it by creating the funny text and the funny backgrounds in those particular things. So I can put in my Facebook text and have the, uh, the, the picture backgrounds. It's got access to all the normal picture backgrounds. Here we go. Um, unfortunately, I've got like a bunch of personal ones that I've used for my personal profile, which are like uh, like um, bitmojis of myself. They're not accessible through here because I'm posting to pages, not to my personal profile. So you won't be able to do it from there, but you will be able to pick those up if you're posting to your personal profile. Now that's great for doing that, but what if I wanna create a story? Let's create a story. It will now allow you, it's only in the last couple of months this has come about, to post to both Facebook and Instagram in your story. So let's add a bit of media here to fit it into a story we're gonna create. Let's just say, I'll create something that's got a bit of actual picture in it. So we go maybe this billabong cover. So as it loads up, it's gonna insert it into in the right shape and gives us previews in both Facebook and Instagram so we can see what it actually looks like. In amongst all that, I can then add text if I want to. So let's add in some text. I'm gonna go, um, let's say make it white. You can type in there, great book for kids. And I can also pick my different kinds of, if I wanna highlight all that, maybe put it down here where it's a bit darker. And I can change that from Helvetica through to maybe uh, chalkboard which is a bit more kidsy, or you can pick any of these different ones. There's not an unlimited amount of them. You've only got certain ones you can work with, but you can see that you've got a bit on there. And I can add more text up here in the top if I want to, and then even add stickers. So I wanna find some great stickers to add in there too. There's a whole huge amount of them. So I can say maybe look, that one's what the one that can go at the top. And then I've got the ability to publish that now to Facebook and Instagram whenever I like, or I can go schedule the story to go at a certain time. So let's just say I wanna do it at the 30th at 7.19 PM, I can save that. And then that will then be scheduled through. So I'll save it and then I go schedule story down the bottom and that will schedule it ahead. Now you can't do repeat ones. It's not quite that um, advanced yet, but it's very, very close to it. It's a really good tool and the ability to meow now do these through a Facebook tool rather than having to pay for something, I think it means it's come a really, really long way. 
So I'm really hoping that you were able to pick up some great tips there on those different tools. Um, they're all ones which I've used before. As I said, for people, I'm using Social Pilot very heavily now. For more of my creative clients, we're using just Creative Studio, but more particularly now using uh, the Business Suite because we can post those stories on Instagram and Facebook, not just posts. But if you want to do the multiple things, then you'll have to go outside the Facebook tools and use things like Social Pilot, um, Hootsuite, Buffer, social manuals. If you want to really look at a good value one for like fairly low um, cost to get in, and often it's featured on those AppSumo sites and and I think Crowd. What's it called? Crowd Crowd Point? No, no, Crowd Point Crowd. So I'll remember it one day. But it's like a crowdsourced version of um, AppSumo where there's lots of daily deals and software like that. It's often on special and it's got tons and tons of features in it and I'll be revisiting it myself. I think it's a really great value tool. So if you'd like to reach out and you've got any um, sort of questions you'd like to ask about all this, uh, feel free to reach out to me at dante at treaty.com.au. That's your ability to be able to sort of reach me and I guess um, ask the questions you're not able to ask in webinars like this. If you've got some questions you want to ask that are very specific to your particular business, I'll just um, quickly whack my details up on the screen so you can read those. And you can also feel free to stalk me on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, and wherever you find good social media tarts like myself hanging out and trying to make a name for ourselves. I really do hope you have a great night and a great weekend coming up, and I hope to see you in the next one.